Hi, I'm Andrew from The Attachment Company and this video is going to be a brief overview of our range of mini excavator auger drives from Auger Torque. These are the three different models of auger drives that we use for mini excavators from 1.5 tonnes up to around 5 or 6 tonnes. The reason that we chose these three particular models of auger drive is to suit the specs, the weights and the oil pressure and flows of machines from 1.5 up to 6 tonnes. Now we've got these sitting from smallest up to the larger model 3300, the X1100 will suit machines up to about 2.5 tonnes, the 2100 up to about 3.5, 4 tonnes and the 3300 up to 5 or 6 tonnes. Now the, the 1100 we recommend using only up to an 18 inch auger, the 2100 you can use slightly bigger than that, the 3300 we go up to a 36 inch auger. All three of these drives have a 2 inch hex output shaft which is most common in the US, so any 2 inch hex auger, whether it's ours or someone else's, will fit on either of these auger drives. This is our single pin mount that suits all three of these drive units. The single pin is the cheapest, easiest and the fastest way to mount it on your machine, although you can only manually pin on the single pin mount. So if your machine's got a hydraulic or a mechanical quick coupler, you won't be able to use a single pin. If you manually pin on your bucket, you can just unpin your bucket, slide this pin on, pin your auger drive through and you're good to go. We keep these in stock from 25mm up to 45mm, which suits most mini excavators up to the 5-6 turn range. Anything bigger than that you would require a bigger drive unit and we'd manufacture a double pin mount to suit. Now these are the cradles that we use for what we call a cradle mount. This can either be a double pin cradle mount for quick couplers or for just manual pin on or it can be a quick connect for like a Kubota or a John Deere or a Bobcat Exchange, any type of uh, dedicated quick coupler system, we would use these cradles. <coughs> these cradles pin the drive through here, let the, still let the drive hang uh, always vertically because it can swivel four ways. We then put a flat plate on here and then weld on whatever bucket ears, double pins, bobcat exchange, whatever you need to go on top of this. And then <coughs> when you curl out your bucket, the auger will hang straight up and down. When you curl in your bucket, this will cradle the drive for when you're moving the machine or putting it on a trailer or moving around the job site. It just stops it from hanging around. You can tuck the drive in and it's a lot safer and easier when you're traveling. Now, as you can see, there's two different size cradles and that's because the 3300, again, has that larger gearbox. So that cradle is just a lot, uh, that gearbox is just a lot bigger. So in turn, the cradle is bigger. The cradle is made out of thicker plate. And then the bigger drives and some of our other videos use an, a bigger cradle than this. Again, thicker plates, bigger gearboxes, just everything's heavier so that we can weld on the correct mount and everything to suit the machine that it's going on. That covers all three different models for mini excavators and the mounting options that are available. Now let's open up a box and see what you get inside with your drive unit. So we'll open up the box of this X2100 model. The styrofoam boxes come in two halves. In the top half, don't forget your operator's manual from Auger Torque. It has everything that you need to know about the drive unit inside. Then we can lift off the top half and most of the time the hoses will come with it but we can show you those in a second. This is what your auger drive will look like inside the box. You get the pin and the linch pin that pins your auger onto the output shaft. You'll get two hoses and you'll also get a set of flat face couplers to suit the hoses. Now unless specified in particular these will be a half inch flat face and that's going to cover most machines are going to be half inch. Some of the smaller machines on that use drives like these might need a 3 8 coupler um, but again you can get in contact with us and we can get some measurements and find out to make sure we get you the correct size coupler because these hoses and the hose ports on the motor are actually going to be a BSP which is a British standard pipe which isn't always the easiest to find here in the US. So you can find adapters and you can find different bits and pieces, but couplers with BSPs are probably gonna be more expensive. So you're better off making sure that we include the correct ones. And these are included at no extra charge on top of the unit. So 
the one price that you get includes all of this and then as mentioned you'll get two hoses if I can get it out now you'll get a set of half inch hoses that suit your drive unit as well now these are going to come straight on one side and 90 on one side there's the side with a 90 and the side with a union connector i'll show you here in just a second where what side these go on but basically your 90 side is going to go to the hydraulic motor and this is all in the operator's manual that will instruct you through how to connect your hoses up properly make sure you get no leaks or again you can get in contact with us but let's open up the drive unit and we'll show you where all these parts go So here is your nice freshly painted auger drive. Then obviously you've got your main pin that again would pin through your single pin mount here or will pin through the linkage block here. And what this lets you do with the linkage block is that lets the drive hang or swing left to right. And then obviously the pin this way, it helps it swing front to back. So that way, no matter what angle your machine's at, your drive's always hanging straight up and down, which is what you want. Then again, you've got your two hose ports on the hydraulic motor that will be capped, and these will be pretty tough to get off. But here we go. So you unscrew these. Then one thing to make sure of, and we'll show you a close-up, is these caps come off, but then there's going to be a washer, and that's probably going to be stuck to the motor because of the paint. So we'll see if we can get that off because if we don't take that off, it's not going to seal properly. So there's that washer that comes off that always gets stuck to the inside of the, or the outside of the port. And again, why we need to take that off is you'll get a half inch male union with your hoses. Now what that does is there's one side's going to be have a washer on it, the other side's not. The side with the washer is going to take the place of this, this cap and screw right in to the motor. So what we usually do is screw these on first, probably the bottom one first because it's easier. Screw these in first, get them nice and tight, and then screw your hose onto that. It makes it a whole lot easier. So again, the washer side is going to go down on the seal against the motor. And then the BSPs, they use a cone, and that will seal up against the cone on this side of the hose. So then you would take your hose and tighten that on to the adapter here. Make sure all that's nice and tight. And then on the other side, it's just gonna be a straight male with a washer that you would take these little caps out of the, the flat face couplers, screw your coupler on there, and that's more or less you ready to go. Just take these back off. Now, other than connecting your hoses, this drive is going to be filled with gearbox oil, basically ready to go to work. Now, the manual does suggest that you run it for a few minutes each direction. So once you get everything connected, make sure there's no leaks, is sit in the machine, run your hydraulics for, it recommends five to 10 minutes. So you would do that both directions, make sure everything's all heated up, make sure there's no noises, make sure there's no leaks. That's before you stick anything in the ground. So you would do that, you wouldn't put any auger on, you would just run it, you know, hanging in the air. Just make sure everything's nice, that gets all the oil running, gets everything heated up. And then, then you can stick your auger on and actually, you know, drill in the ground. 
one thing that we do get quite a lot is if these, obviously if these hoses are not sealed correctly, what happens is you won't see a lot, but the hydraulic oil will drip down from the motor. It maybe won't spray everywhere, so you won't see it. So it'll drip down, and what it does is it'll accumulate right down in where this can bolts on top of the gearbox. Now, we'll show you a close-up, but there's a little slot here in the can that, that bolts onto the gearbox. And what that's for is obviously there's rainwater and there's different stuff can get down in uh, the hood of the drive unit and that just lets it drain out basically so this doesn't all fill up with water or oil or whatever so what people what happens is some people will see some oil come out of here and they'll think the unit's no good it's, it's leaking straight for the factory there's gearbox oil or there's something you know it's I've, I've done everything my hoses are tight but it's it's leaking again what's probably happened is that the the washer is either stuck on here and it's not sealed properly or they've put the, the union connector that we showed you on the wrong way and that's not sealed properly. But either way, 99% of the time it's not going to be an actual gearbox leak. Your gearbox is completely sealed and obviously the motor's sealed on top of that. So you shouldn't be getting any gearbox oil leaks. It's going to look like it's coming from the gearbox, but it's more than likely it's not. So that's something to keep in mind. Then also these auger torque uh, drive units, the gearbox oil from the factory is going to be dyed blue. So you would know if it's gearbox oil because it's going to be a different colour. Obviously your hydraulic oil is not going to be blue. So you would know if it's a hydraulic problem or if it's a gearbox problem. But other than that, obviously the drives are fairly simple. As I mentioned, we get um, all these drives have the two inch hex, two inch hex shaft that will suit more or less every two inch hex auger that's out there so don't feel that you have to come back and get your augers from us or you know if you can find a two inch hex auger locally if you need a different size to save shipping it will more than likely fit this no problem um, if you need another output shaft like a round we actually don't offer the rounds anymore in the us what we would do is send you an adapter that would adapt from the hex uh, female or it would be a hex female to a round male and let you use any round auger bits that you've got and obviously there's extensions that can be used with these as well there's stump planers log splitters as well as just the the auger bits that we carry so if you've got questions on any of those attachments to suit any of these drives or any of our bigger drives or anything just give us a shout uh, or contact us through the website and thanks for watching